Welcome to Comics, Beer, and Sci-Fi. Bend the knee. Hey everybody, welcome to season two of Comics, Beer, and Sci-Fi. I'm Nick. And I'm Jill. How you doing, partner? Good to be back co-hosting. Yes, it is. Let's start the show off by thanking our new sponsor, Lawrence Technological University, where possible is everything. And on this episode, we're going to look at all of the hot new fall TV shows, and we got a real treat up front. Mark interviewed the great Bruce Campbell. Hey, this is Mark at the Historic Redford Theater, here to talk to our favorite one-handed, chainsaw-wielding, demon-carving time traveler, Bruce Campbell. Way back in October of 1981, Bruce premiered the original Evil Dead here at the Redford. We wanted to know how it felt to return. Uh, it's fantastic. It's the salmon spawning. You know, it's 35 years later, we're here. It's, uh, it's a great experience. Well, I came here before we premiered Evil Dead in, you know, 83. I saw Bridge on the River Kwai here, Lawrence of Arabia, Sound of Music. So this was the theater we knew we wanted to go to to premiere the movie. So I have, I have pre-Evil Dead history with this theater. New history was made tonight as Bruce stopped by to promote the follow-up to his bestseller, If Chins Could Kill. His new memoir is Hail to the Chin. Well, it's more of a mature book. I'm more of a mature person. I'm sort of in the act two phase of my career. And the challenge, of course, is did you pick the right stories? Did you pick the right parts of the right story? So that, that's every writer's challenge. As part of the book signing, Bruce also rolled out his live game show, Last fan standing. Well, I'm at the game show phase of my career now. You know, I'm ready for my Wink Martindale phase. A buddy of mine, Steve Celery, created a show that was for the troops originally. It was a military game show, and I hosted it. And I thought, hey, this could translate. So it's a fun thing. F fans get involved. It's not your boring questions. This is more like, how much does Thor's hammer weigh? Questions like that. With appearances in several classic shows, including Hercules, Xena, and Burn Notice, we had to ask about his current role in Ash vs. Evil Dead, which is heading into its third season. Uh, well, we get the great Lee Majors back, playing my father. There's a, Ash gets a daughter, season three, so it's added complications. He not only has to save the world, he has to raise an unruly daughter. Well, by the end of season three, nothing you thought was real will be the same. Everything's gonna change. Uh, big changes ahead for Mr. Ashley J. Williams. So hopefully you'll pick your jaw up off the floor at the end of season three. Probably they're gonna air it in uh, February of 2018. I'd like to thank Bruce for talking to us and he's inspired me to write my own biography, Hail to the Gut. This is Mark, thanks for watching. Thank you, Mark. Looking forward to Bruce's new book. And now we're gonna go to Brad who was in Hollywood and he's gonna take a look at some of the new shows that just came out. Hey, it's the Bradcast, and Comic Experience Sci-Fi is here on location at Paramount Pictures. We are here because Paramount has released Star Trek Discovery after 10 years of waiting. Here it is. And you know what? Good news, bad news. You can watch the first episode for free. Everybody else pays after that. And sometimes when you're lost, you're found. See, that was worth the wait, wasn't it? But you know what? Sometimes a good parody is what you really need. So Seth MacFarlane has brought us The Orville. And I'm telling you, if you think Family Guy is funny, you're gonna love every bit of fun they poke at every Star Trek movie you've ever seen before. That's not bad, right? No, it's good. Paint some flames on the side, and maybe like a rainbow unicorn, you got something. <laughs> This has been the Bradcast, live in Hollywood. And you know what? I almost feel bad for Jill and Nick. Well, you guys, I hope you're having fun back in Detroit. Thanks, Brad. With watching all those TV shows, you're gonna get thirsty. So here's Shannon to tell us about some great Oktoberfest beers. This segment is sponsored by Beggar Dave's, a proud supporter of local craft beer. Stop in today for the best damn burger and beer. 
Hey, it's Shannon Long, and today I'm celebrating Oktoberfest at Beggar Days with my favorite drinking buddies, Richie and Nick. But before we get drinking, I need to teach you two about the origins of Oktoberfest. Yeah. Oktoberfest began in 1810 when the Crown Prince of Bavaria, Louis, married this chick, Therese. To celebrate, they invited all of Munich to attend a party. This party was so banging that they decided to make the celebration an annual event. It is a common misconception that most of Oktoberfest occurs in October. It actually begins in mid-September and ends by early October. Equally as important as the party is this beer. It's a Mars in style, which means March. I have a treat for you guys. Yeah. This is Hofbrau Oktoberfest beer. So this baby is all the way from Germany. And to be considered a real Oktoberfest beer, it has to be brewed in Munich proper. And this beer is. So this beer is one of the millions of gallons that are consumed at Oktoberfest in Germany. Are you ready to try it? Oh, hell yeah. So there's almost no hot bitterness. So creamy, so clean, mm. but just a little sweetness. Yes, it almost is like the quintessential beer, if that makes any sense. It's like this is beer and everything else is a variation on beer. So we've got Sam Adams Oktoberfest, oh. which would be, I mean, really an iconic example of this style. So on the nose, I definitely get a little bit of burnt toast, some caramel. Yes, definitely. Mm. I find it to be much more subtle than the other one. So it's a, it's a pretty easy going beer. That's good beer. Gentlemen, are you still with me? I am. Yes, I am. <laughs> we have yes, Rochester know. Mills Oktoberfest. In a can. <laughs> there you go. When I think of Oktoberfest, it's that classic white and blue Harlequin design. It's very festive. Gentlemen, we have, oh, you guys are all done already? I was going to do a pro Sorry, I'm a drunkard. Here. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so last but not least, we have Great Lakes Brewing Company. They're out of Cleveland, Ohio. All right. So this beer, though, comes with some serious hardware. Okay. It's won four silver and gold medals at the World Beer Championship. Wow. It tastes a little thicker than the others. It does. The mouth feels a little bit more yeah. medium to full body. It's time to pick our favorite. All right. This was a great beer. It still had the caramel. It had the sweetness, and it'll pair well with so many great foods. I really, I think for me, the Hofbrau is the winner. Next up, we have Rochester Mills. I'm a homer. Rochester Mills happened to be my number one pick. Okay. I like the bitter. Okay. I like the, uh, the little subtle fruit in there. Last but not least, we have Great Lakes, the, the medal award winning yes. Oktoberfest. And uh, like the cliche I am, that was my favorite. So I agree with all those uh, brilliant judges who chose it. It's got, as Shannon mentioned, it's got the six and a half percent alcohol. So it's more what I'm used to drinking. So this would be my pick. Now I'm amazed that the folks in Ohio can make beer. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for drinking beer with me, uh, Prost. Thanks for having us, Prost. Thanks, Shannon. And now we're gonna go to Mark's movie segment and he's gonna tell us about one of my favorite TV shows as a kid that they're turning to a movie. Hey everyone, welcome back. I've decided to grow my hair out to its natural color just in time for the release of the My Little Pony movie. When their home of Ponyville is threatened by dark forces, lead pony Twilight Sparkle and her friends must go on an adventure to save their land. Voiced by Emily Blunt, Zoe Zeldana, and Michael Pena. This animated musical fantasy is based after the hit TV show and once out of the gates will do very well at the box office. Also coming out this week is the long-awaited sequel to the 1982 Thinking Man sci-fi film Blade Runner. This time the story takes place in 2049 where a young Blade Runner played by Ryan Gosling must track down a former Blade Runner played by Harrison Ford to help solve a hidden secret. The film co-stars Jared Leto and Robin Wright. You're a cop. I had your job once. Things were simpler then. What do you want? I want to ask you some questions. What happened? I covered my tracks. Scramble the records. We were being hunted. And lastly is The Mountain Between Us about two strangers stranded on a snow-covered mountain after their plane crashes. It stars Thor's Idris Elba and Titanic's Kate Winslet. And if Titanic is any indication, it looks like Idris isn't going to make it out of this movie alive. That's it for this week at the movies. I better ride out of here before they send me to the glue factory. Thank you, Mark. Yeah, thanks for the nightmares. Uh, 
We're going to go to our first commercial break, and we'll be right back. Out of all the burger and beer joints, you walk into this one. Good call, because now you're face-to-face -face with the best burger you'll ever have. Handcrafted, locally sourced, and grilled to perfection. Bagger Dave's. Locals wanted. Hello, my lady. I ordered two large Howie Mowies with butter cheese crust. Wow, you are one serious breast cancer awareness supporter. A warrior for love, hope, and pizza. Can't seem to reach my wallet. <laughs> Flavor fanatics love us because for every pizza purchased in October, we make a donation to the National Breast Cancer Foundation. Hungry? Howie! I want a career in robotics and automation, so I chose Lawrence Tech for its first in Michigan robotics engineering program. LTU's brand new STEM complex has a robotics lab where we can design, build, and program robots in a creative atmosphere. And the best thing is, I haven't graduated yet, but I already have a job in my field. I know I made the right choice for my career. Lawrence Tech, possible is everything. Welcome back. Thanks for sticking around. And we are going to continue looking at the new fall TV shows with The Q, who's going to tell you all about the returning DC comic shows. This is The Q from Comics Brand Sci-Fi here at the Monroe Comic Con, and I'm here to talk to you about what else? DC TV. My God. Really? You have to bring him up now. We were having a moment. And I know Lucifer has already started, so you're already well into that. He's got wings. He's an angel. What's up with that? Watch it. It's on season three. Masterpiece. What was the initial reason you went out there? I can make a difference in Gotham. It's dangerous. Gotham? Phenomenal. This is what I've been waiting on. Oh, my God. It finally looked like he's going to become Batman. I tried to be Car Danvers for 15 years, but I'm not supposed to be her. What makes me me is Supergirl. All the CW shows will be starting next week after you get to see this beautiful face on TV. Let's start off with The Flash as Barry Allen is returning from the Speed Force, all gruffled and stuff. I don't know what's with that. I made you a new suit. You want to take it for a spin? The Legends of Tomorrow. As you know, they broke time last season. Not supposed to be looking at yourself when you go back in time. They screwed that all up. We actually saved the world. Twice. Then why does it still suck? The last but not least, Arrow, which left off on a cliffhanger last season. I can't wait to see what's going on to see who survived and who died. This has been a cue for Comics Brand and Sci-Fi, talking about DC TV. Now we're going to take a break from TV, and Casey's going to tell us about some of the new comic books that are coming out this week. Hey, comic book geeks and sci-fi freaks. This is comic book Casey coming at you from Comic City in West Bloomfield. I'm here with my buddy, Aaron. Comic City is located in West Bloomfield, and there are four locations. Tell us where they are, Aaron. Trenton, Pontiac, uh, West Bloomfield here, and uh, Canton. We're here today to talk about the new releases. OK, we're going to start with my favorite, Batman. I'm a big Batman fan. Anybody that knows me knows I love Batman, even more than Q. So we got Batman White Knight, not to get it mistaken now. Batman's not turning white or wearing a white costume. The White Knight in this, it's a little bit of a twist. Why don't you explain that to us? Well, the White Knight in this instance is uh, the Joker. Batman is uh, kind of gone over the edge, kind of cured the Joker himself. How the heck did the Joker get cured? Batman shoves the uh, pills down his throat, but no one knows what they were. All of a sudden, Joker's cured. Now the Joker turns on him. The guy cures him, and he turns on him, stabs him in him back, and tries to get him arrested and get him locked up in Arkham. Yes. OK, makes sense to me. With this story, how many books are going to be in this series? Is this going to be an ongoing series, or is this going to be a limited series? This is going to be a mini series. OK, just mini, so yep. probably about, what, maybe five, six, seven? Five, five or six issues, I guess. All right, our next book we're going to talk about that's uh, new to be released this week is Spirits of Vengeance. Now. I'm a fan of Blade and Ghost Rider, but never been a big reader of those, so maybe you can help me out. What's this new Spirits of Vengeance about? So Spirits of Vengeance is about uh, Johnny Blaze, the original Ghost Rider. Uh, he's, oh, he's uh, back. He's back, yes. Right. With, uh, Love Johnny Blaze. With Marvel Legacy, he's back. Him, Blade, and uh, Damien Hellstrom are uh, teaming up. They're fighting other demons. And, and Blade's a vampire, so you throw a vampire and exactly. mix with a devil and a demon. Yep. You're going to get a lot of hell to pay. I got you. Yep. Now, another thing we wanted to touch on that's been going over really big lately is the new DC release of the Metal comic books. 
DC considers this the big thank you to their fans. Uh, it's not just a gimmick. Uh, they have they actually have a Spotify playlist to it. And then it deals with the multiverse, a whole new multiverse. Of so it explains a lot of things that probably went unexplained yes. in several other issues that, from the past that we've read. Yeah, and it's also written and drawn by the same team that did the new 52 Batman. Uh, Greg Capullo okay. did the art and uh, Scott Snyder writes it. Uh, so it, they has it also familiar. That's an awesome it. team. Yeah, you yes, can't go wrong with that. Can't go wrong with that. We have to talk about this, Marvel Legacy. Yeah. Break it down for me, man. So this is the big event for Marvel. Not really an event, it's a one-shot that just came out last week. Wolverine's back to death. The original Wolverine from the universe of 616, which is- Logan has returned. Yep, and he has an Infinity Gem with Yes, well. if you can see that. This is definitely a must-buy. I already started reading it, and I'm hooked. I hope you come back next week and join us. We'll be back in Comic City. I'm going to be here next week. Are you going to be here next week? I'll be here. He might be. I don't know. No, he's got to be here, because I know no, nothing about this without him. Well, we're all suffering from Game of Thrones withdrawal, but hey, we can all get our cosplay on and hit some of these great Renaissance festivals throughout the country. I just went to one myself, and here's what I saw. One of the most anticipated annual events in the Mitten is the Michigan Renaissance Festival held in Holly and recreating a 16th century experience for its visitors with the sights and sounds of a 17 acre village, complete with building reproductions of Renaissance shops, taverns, and a castle. Continuous entertainment takes place on the streets and on 17 stages, featuring full contact armor jousting, comedy and theater shows, music, games, people-powered rides, and more. Plenty of options for food, both period and modern, and more than 300 artisans displaying their gallery quality works add to the fun. The Michigan Renaissance Festival attracts more than 250,000 visitors from Michigan, surrounding states, and Canada. Visitors are encouraged to dress up and get into the spirit and character of the times. And in addition to the usual attractions, each weekend has a theme, such as the Highland Fling, the High Seas Adventure, and the Wonders of the World. Well, that looked fun. It'd have been cool to go. Where was my invite? Uh, we gotta go to commercial. We'll be right back. I want to be a dermatologist, and though a lot of universities tried to recruit me for basketball, Lawrence Tech had the science curriculum that I wanted. LTU Southfield campus is a great place to learn, and the classes are small enough that I don't have to wait for office hours to talk to my professors. They're usually right by my side, challenging me and guiding me toward a successful future. Lawrence Tech, possible is everything. I'm here today at Northwestern Tech, the HVAC school in Southfield, to see how they're training their students for the growing demand in the heating and cooling industry. With our years of experience and literally thousands of successful graduates, Northwestern Tech has been debunking this myth that you need a four-year degree to have a great career. Our HVAC program was designed to give our students the hands-on skills to be working in the field in only 10 and a half months. This is Heather Park reporting from Southfield that Northwestern Tech really is the HVAC school that works. We don't frost brew our beer, and hot chicks won't appear if you drink it. Our beer doesn't come in a bow tie shaped can or need color indicators to tell you it's cold. It won't be delivered by Clydesdale horses, and to tell you the truth, we aren't the most interesting people in the world. Fact of the matter is, we don't tell stories. We just let our beer do the talking. This is Samantha from Comics, Beer, and Sci-Fi. This gaming segment is brought to you by Lawrence Technological University. Since it's TV week on our show, I'm going to look at some video games based on a few of our favorite animated series. Let's start with the Potty Mouth Kids from South Park. Creators Matt Stone and Trey Parker are currently on season 21 of their show, and after several delays, they'll finally release their seventh South Park video game, The Fractured Butthole, on October 17th. This superhero role-playing game is a sequel to The Stick of Truth and is guaranteed to equally offend and entertain. It's available on PS4, Xbox One, and Windows. 
Back in 2012, Adventure Time released a Nintendo DS game, Hey Ice King, Why'd You Steal Our Garbage? You play as Finn and Jake, who have to stop the Ice King from making a garbage princess. The only real complaint of this great game is that it's just too short. There has been almost 30 video games based on The Simpsons for practically every platform since the early 90s. Perhaps the best of the video games is Hit and Run from 2003, which serves as a parody of the Grand Theft Auto series. Fans love being able to interact with all the many characters and locations from the show. Disney's DuckTales was released in 1989, and you play as Scrooge McDuck, who travels the world in outer space to collect treasures. It is considered by many to be one of the best games ever made for the original Nintendo Entertainment System. It was so popular that it spawned a Game Boy version, a sequel in 1993, and a remake in 2013 for Xbox 360 and PS3. Sadly, we just scratched the surface of all the awesome TV-based show video games. So many games, so little time. Until next week, this has been Samantha for Comics Fear and Sci-Fi. This fall marks the seventh season of the great anthology show, American Horror Story, Cult. And why don't we take a look at some footage from that one. If you get people scared enough, they will set the world on fire. Also returning for its second season, The Exorcist, based on the original classic 1973 feature film of the same name. And there's a new show starting this fall, a supernatural sitcom called Ghosted, starring Adam Scott. Now we're gonna go to Joe Johnson, who's gonna show us the classic movie car from Starsky and Hutch. TV car. Movie. TV. Movie. Did they even have TVs when you were growing up? Yes. Black and white. Joe. Welcome to Hollywood Car Minute, I'm Joe Johnson and I'm joined by Mel Guthrie and behind us we have a beautiful tribute to the classic car from the TV show Starsky and Hutch, a show about two undercover detectives who drive a bright red Gran Torino with a white stripe that can be spotted from a helicopter. Mel, what can you tell me about this car behind us? Well, it is a beautiful car and it was a show about uh, the second dynamic duo right after Batman and Robin. I think a big part of the popularity of this show is how much the, the guys really seem to be fond of one another. The car is a gorgeous car, but you're right, it wasn't too good for being undercover. <laughs> an interesting little tidbit about this particular car is that it made an appearance on the Dukes of Hazard. It raced against the General Lee. Mel, thanks so much for showing us this beautiful car from Starsky and Hutch, and thank you for watching Hollywood Car Minute. We'll see you next time, I'm Joe Johnson. Thank you, Joe, for doing that segment on that classic TV car. Movie. TV. Movie. TV. Okay, well, we're going to go to break. We'll be right back. It's movie. Movie. I want to blend my business education and athletic skills and open my own fitness center. At Lawrence Tech, I'm learning how to research, present, and to really think like an entrepreneur. And I love the small college feel here where there's always something to do. We have men's and women's intercollegiate sports and dozens of student organizations. I can't wait to apply what I'm learning here in the real world. Lawrence Tech, possible is everything. When every seat in the house looks like this, there are no bad seats. Pull up a chair and get face to face with the best burger you'll ever have. Bagger Dave's, locals wanted. I'm here today at Northwestern Tech, the HVAC school in Southfield, to see how they're training their students for the growing demand in the heating and cooling industry. As an industry, we're in serious need of new technicians entering the field. But to work for me, you need to be trained right. That's why at Flame, we insist to go to Northwestern Tech. It's simple. If you want a career in heating and cooling, Northwestern Tech is a place for you. I highly recommend it. This is Heather Park reporting from Southfield that Northwestern Tech really is the HVAC school that works. Welcome back to the last portion of our show. Thanks for sticking around. Earlier, Q talked to us about some DC shows, and now the broadcast is gonna to talk to us about some Marvel shows. 
Hey, it's the Bradcast, and we're here at Monroe Comic Con. We're talking about Marvel TV. First up is Inhumans. I know the reviews haven't been that great, but maybe you should give it a watch. Are you going to use your voice to kill your only brother? Stop it! <laughs> Next up is The Gifted. This is an X-Men entry from producer and director Brian Singer. If you like the movies, you need to give this one a watch. This is a burden, yes, but it's also a gift. For Comic Experience Sci-Fi, this has been the Bradcast at Monroe Comic Con. And now we're going to go into the last segment of our show with Richie and his home video picks. Oh, you're watching me. And I know you miss me because I miss seeing myself on TV. Here's this week's releases. New to home video are a pair of TV shows. Up first is season one of The Wonderfully Strange American Gotch, which is produced by Hannibal's Brian Fuller and based on Neil Gaiman's classic urban fantasy. This is not for everyone, but a must-see for the adventurous. This week, we also get all 62 episodes of the Emmy Award-winning Samurai Jack. The complete series Blu-ray set also includes many never-before-seen bonus features. True classic never goes out of style. Chucky is back with the straight-to-video cult of Chucky. Fiona Dorif returns as Nika, who is now a mental patient being tormented by visions of the demented doll. Fiona is played by the real-life daughter of Brad Dorif, who has provided the voice of Chucky for the entire series of films. Speaking of which, Cult of Chucky can also be found in the new box set, Chucky, the complete Southern movie collection. All of these versions are available now on Blu-ray and DVD. Also out now in new 3D and 4K versions is Terminator 2, Judgment Day. This is the best of the Terminator series, and thanks to director James Cameron's work on Avatar, you know the 3D transfer is going to be mind-blowing. Not a 3D fan? Don't worry. The new 4K and Blu-ray set includes a new restoration, documentary, and plenty of other bonus material to make it worth your hard-earned bucks. Hasta la vista, baby. The most exciting home video news of the week is that many of the classic animated films from Japan's Studio Ghibli are getting new Blu-ray and DVD releases. Among the first wave of titles are many of director Hayao Miyazaki's masterpieces, including My Neighbor Totoro, Howl's Moving Castle, Panyo, Kiki's Delivery Service, Spirited Away, Princess Mononoke, Castle in the Sky, and Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind. Let's hope release dates for the rest of the Studio Ghibli films aren't far off. That's it for this week's home video picks. Go ahead and uh, turn the channel to whatever you want to watch now. No sense watching this no, anymore Rich, since my segment's done. Come on. What are you doing? Rich. That, okay, okay, all right, all right. Hey, stick around. Thank you, Richie. And we've now reached the end of our first episode of season two. We want to thank all of you for watching. We want to thank Lawrence Technological University. Where possible is everything. And Jill, should we give a little tease about next week's episode? My spider senses are tingling. And with a great TV show comes great responsibility. 